Hi there guys. I was doing a training video for RP web application development and I came across a particular section which I thought could actually be a standalone video. What I'll be showing you is how you can include TypeScript in your Delphi application and actually have Delphi automatically compile the TypeScript into JavaScript and deliver it into the content folder for your website. I'm doing this with XE7, but this will work pretty much from any version 2009 onwards. There's nothing specific to RP either. You can definitely do this for any kind of project. So we have our JavaScript file here, but good Delphi developers will know that JavaScript by itself isn't really type safe, so we'd rather use TypeScript. Now, TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript that lets us use type safe objects. Now, so here we have things like interface, we have function, but we also have class. Now, ES6 has those things as well. However, TypeScript enforces it. So we've got constructors and everything. So that's why we like TypeScript coming from the Delphi environment. And of course, Anders Alsberg is in charge of the TypeScript project at Microsoft. We'll have to look at this tsconfig file again shortly. We'll come back to that. But importantly, we don't get any IntelliSense or pop-ups or code completion when we're using TypeScript in Delphi at the moment. I'm gonna to need to check 10.3 to see what the state is, but at the moment I'm currently using Visual Studio Code. If we just compare the TypeScript side-by-side -side with the JavaScript, we need a way to get it from the TypeScript on the left into the JavaScript on the right. So the JavaScript on the right run in the browser, the TypeScript on the left won't run in the browser. What we're doing is we're just getting rid of the JS files out of here so we can show exactly what, what we need to do. So I'm going to go to the command line. First thing is, if you haven't got TypeScript installed, you need to go to the TypeScript website and download it. The other point is in order to download TypeScript, you need NPM. So NPM is used for all sorts of JavaScript installation. If you're doing any kind of JavaScript, you need NPM as well. You need to go to the NPM website and download NPM to get as far as this. So we're getting TypeScript using the minus G option, meaning install globally. That means that you can see it outside of this folder. If we just type TSC at the command line, minus H, there's a whole lot of config and everything in here. It's very confusing and it took me hours just to sort it all out. So if we take this first line here, that's the shape of the command that we need. Let's go down and paste that in. What we're going to do is our site.ts file, we need to compile into site.js file. So we'll use a relative path from the folder we're currently in. And that's where we want it to go and the file we want to compile is called site.ts. Okay, so if we compile, and more strictly speaking, transpile it, you see that we get a whole lot of errors. I mean, that's a bit unusual because I've already compiled this before on the, the TypeScript playground, so why, why doesn't it work? So we've got promises and we've got find index that it's complaining about. Now the reason is, is by default, the version of JavaScript generated is ES3, which was from like, 95 or something uh, a long time ago so you actually need to set the target that you want will es5 work the answer is going to be no because in fact i'm using es6 features in that so again we get the same errors so in fact we need to use es6 to compile this if we just type tsc at the command line on this age there's a whole lot of config and everything in here we do that we now see that we got the site.js file back what we want to do is have Delphi compile this for us whenever we make a change so we don't have to fiddle around with it forever there's a neat feature called watch which lets TSC continuously monitor the folder and just whenever you make a change it'll automatically compile it for you but we want to do it in Delphi so that it's inside our Delphi project and we can work from there
it's fine for one file, but what if we do have multiple files? So let's make it quickly a hello world TS file. So now we've got two files in our TS folder. So we'll just quickly make a file that will compile. Hello world. And if we go back now and look, if we now compile this one, hello world.js and from hello world.ts, that compiles fine and we get our hello world.js file being generated for us. Okay, so that'd be pretty tedious to have to do that for every individual file. So surely there's a way to compile all the files. Is it something like star.js? and output it to here. But as it turns out, no, it's not the answer. It doesn't do, it doesn't work. Um, and, and if you look at the help file, maybe there's some switch in here you can use to do all of the files. As it turns out, no, there isn't. So it's not something, anything to do with this, or there's nothing about build or whatever. It's not in the help file. You actually have to use that tsconfig.json file that I mentioned earlier on to configure what to do. So So quickly, if we just pop over to the tsconfig.json file, and we'll just get rid of this and zoom this up a little. Um, first, we have our compiler options. There's quite a few in there, and we'll just briefly look at one of those in particular, the no implicit any. The reason is, is because the tsconfig file works differently than the command line by default. Let's just examine it. If we go again back to ES6, and we use the no implicit any, which is what this will do by default. When we compile that, we'll get a whole lot of errors. Now, what that's saying is you haven't been strict enough in your variable assignment. In TypeScript, you can just ignore the typing or you can use it. So you see here in response on line 46 and also in 54, I haven't said what type of data. In fact, it could be any, so I really mean any in this case. So it's being implicitly any. The form, I should have had a HTML form element here. And again, the content type for the populate here could be anything. So I really do mean anything. I'm just going to explicitly say any. So now I've fixed all those up. If we now compile it again, so now that compiles nicely. That means we can go back to our config and in fact, we kind of like the no implicit thing. That's uh, very helpful. So let's turn that back to true. So now the other ones, don't have to worry about too much. The important one is the out do. So have a look at this. So this is a relative path to the config file. tsconfig.json, we have to go up one layer to ts, then over to content and then down into js. So that's why we're doing up one folder content down to js. The target again, we've set to ES6, and the include, it says, what do I want to include? Now, again, this is relative to the project folder, unless you'd be explicit like that, or you can say, oh, I actually mean this folder, dot forward slash in this folder. You can also do subfolders using the double star convention. Now, lastly, the exclude, that's the default that comes in the file. We'll just use the default there. When we're making these files called site dot js dot map. We'll come back to the map information later. How can we use this TS config file we've created? What you do is use the project switch minus minus project and we'll put in the full path here to the folder containing the TS file and just to make it easier to see that it's working. We've got rid of the JS files. And now if we run that, we'll find that our JS file is created, which it is. So if we now look, we've got our hello world, two files, and we've got our site.js, including the map file there. Again, we'll come back to the map file shortly. So I'm gonna grab this command here and then switch over to Delphi. So where do we use this? What we want to do, go to build events, 
and we want to actually go to the pre-build events. So before the XE is compiled, go to the options for the all targets, and you see that we're copying the content already using XCopy from our content folder into the target applications folder so that we actually build the website. So all we need to do is remove this hard-coded reference. We want a relative path to the project so that when we check it in later and give it to somebody else, they have the same spot. Okay, so now we can use the project directory Enviro variable. This might need quotes there, I don't mind, but we might need it. So now if we say okay, Again, let's go and have a look at the folders just to make sure it's working and that Delphi's building it for us. If we go into the JS folder, let's get rid of the site and the hello worlds and delete those. And now if we just hit the compile button, if we've done everything right, that is, we should be able to build and shouldn't get any errors down here. And you should see now we've got our site files and our hello worlds and the applications running. So that's perfect. If we have a look one step further, if we go into the output folder and look into the web root and the JS folder on the actual website, you can see that our files are there. Now let's have a look at this map file. What is that all about? If I open Chrome, go to the application website and then open the developer tools with F12. You can see this says source map detected. So when we have developer tools, Chrome will actually ask, is there a TypeScript file for this? And you see that this is the TypeScript for the application, not the JS. So it's the TS, not the JS. Even though the website only says site.js, we are actually seeing the TypeScript for it in the debugger. That's pretty much all there is to it. There's nothing uh, very magical. You just have to include that map file and the browser will be able to detect it and then you can debug in the TypeScript rather than jobs. Okay then, thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of it. We'll catch you next time.